Hello and welcome to another breakout session. This is breakout session number 24. Uh, today we're going to learn how and why to use a capo. And for you more experienced guys, stick around to the end. There's a couple of capo tricks I'll show you um, that you might not know. But as usual, first thing I like to do is say hi to the members of the Guitar League out there around the country that might be watching today. And as always, I ask if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell that will notify you when we have our next video. And if you like it, uh, please hit the like button. And if you have some positive comments, um, I'll be happy to get those. Um, so let's get started right away. What is a capo and why do you use it? Well, a capo acts as the nut on the guitar. So every fret that you would move up the guitar, you'd change a half of a tone or half a pitch or half a key or a key. Okay, so why would you do that? You would do that to accommodate maybe a singer that needs to sing a song in a different key or a, an instrument that might play in a different key, horns and stuff. Uh, banjos like certain keys to play in. And the other thing is you might, when you use a capo, you can play the chords that you already know, the all the open chords, the cowboy chords. You can play those chords and the licks that you might have learned, you know, the little embellishments and little runs that you might have learned, you can still play those in different keys. So that's the beauty of a capo. And there's some other fun things we'll learn later too. So uh, how many styles of capos are there? I don't know, millions. There's all kinds of styles. And we're gonna show you a few today and what, the, what they do and what they're good for. So hang on just a second. Okay, let's take a look at some capos here. And there's many more where that came from. But we're going to start with the original. The original capo was probably a pencil or a piece of wood with a rubber band around it holding over the fret. This first capo that I'm going to show you is very similar to that. It's probably the least expensive capo. It has an elastic band around it, and which you pull tight, and it has a flat piece that covers the fret. Um, and they work perfectly well. They're just hard to do. It takes two hands, uh, but you can use them. There's nothing wrong with them. And actually they're low profile, so you can kind of get back to uh, play a chord up close. So um, let's just look at this from a little bit of a different angle. Let's start with this capo, the inexpensive one. And if we were to play a G, a C, in a D shape. This capo now is up on the fifth fret. Okay, so this G, C, D is actually a C, an F, and a G. So you see the beauty of that. If you wanted to play in C, but you wanted to use this uh, fingering, You could do that, okay? Or if, so, this, this chord, the G chord, is gonna have the root on the sixth string, the top hot fat string, okay? So that's what you know if you learn the notes, you'd know that this is a C right here on the eighth fret. So that's gonna be a C chord. And you would know that if this shape the C shape chord, we're going to have the root on the fifth string. So you would know that this was an F. So that makes this now an F. So you might want to play something in F. Um, this makes it easier to do using the old C shape. Okay. And the D, actually, the root for the D is on what would be the D string. But it's easier for me to find that root on the B string. So I know 
that that's a G. So that shape is going to be a G shape. Okay? All right, so that's a C. So let's take off this little capo. And by the way, when you put the capo on, a lot of times the capo will pull the, the guitar tuning a little sharp. So don't be afraid of that. But as you get to use, know them better, you'll know the placement of it better. But you want to be just behind the fret, just that way, up the neck, just a teeny bit behind. The perfect spot would probably be right on top of it, but it doesn't leave you any room to play. So we'll take off this first string, uh, this first capo, and you see it's just a basic little rubber band, elastic band with a piece. It's, it's just you're fighting with these to get these on. These just cost a few dollars, okay? Then they even have capos that um, this one has a tuner built into it, okay? We won't mess with that today. But now we're down on the fourth fret. Whoa, and we are a little out of tune because that's better because of the placement of the capo. So using that same G chord, this is now a B. Okay, so now we'd be playing, if we're using those same G chords, the one, four, five chords in G, we are now in the key of B. Okay? Because we, we moved down a half a step. So if we wanted to go to B flat, for instance, we would take that off. Here's another type of capo. This is a Kessler capo. This is a really powerful spring type capo. And, but you can use one hand to move it around, which is nice. It's a clamp type. Um, the spring is so strong in here, it does tend to pull you a little sharp. So you just have to be careful on the placement of that capo. They also make a capo with a softer spring that might be better. So these are nice one-handed capos, okay? So but now we'd be playing, we'd be playing in B flat here. Same chord progression we're playing in B flat. Okay? So now we're getting down to some capos that I like a lot. Now we're down on the second fret. And we have a shove capo on here, and I'll show you when I take it off what that looks like. It clamps on, and there's a little dial in the back to dial it down tight. So if we're playing that same G progression, one, four, five, and G, we're now in A. So you got an A, a D, and an E. Or if you were playing Here, the C, you'd be you'd be in D if you were playing with the with the root on the fifth fret. So you could play a song that might be in G. I mean, I'm sorry. Let's say it's in C, but you want to play it in D, and you want to get the same kind of C licks that you can get. strings ringing and you can do the same the same kind of licks that you could with the C chord up here in D okay that's why a lot of people are doing it because they can get the the chords and the licks that they're used to playing and play it in a different key okay so this was the shove one this clamps on, these are very nice, and it has, it just clamps on, and then you can dial it in with the little dial on the bottom to get it just where you like it. 
Now we're getting up to my two favorite uh, capos right now. Okay, this is a G7 art capo on here, I'll show you. This capo is designed to not throw you out of tune. You can operate this with one hand and I'll show you afterwards. But now we're like in a, in a G sharp kind of a thing or an A flat at this position. But again, if you were trying to play an A flat, you know, with a with a bar chord, you just can't get the same licks out of it. Plus, you not might not be ready for that chord yet. So that's another beauty of the cable. Okay, so this was a G7. This you can one hand, you can move it around, and it's easy to when you're performing. You can be all over the place with this one, real easy. Okay. Then this next one that I have. This happens to be a Taylor version of it, but Diadario makes one, a couple companies make one. And these also are designed not to um, throw you out of tune. And then you can do it with one hand probably, but even two, you can do it with two hands and you can set up the capo and it's got a dial in the back that you dial in to put the capo on. And it very rarely is going to throw you out of tune. Okay. And then if you do not have a volute on the back of the neck of the guitar, uh, this Martin does not have a volute on the back of it. So the beauty to me of this capo is that you can slide it all the way back behind the nut, tighten it very little. I mean, you don't tighten it where it's going to pull your strings down. But it can just sit there, and then when somebody changes keys, you can just whip it down pretty simply. Okay? Okay, those are the, you know, the basic ones. The clamp-ons, the straps, the ones that adjust for the string height and everything. Those are, you know, they, they get more expensive as you go down the line. Uh, but it depends on what you need. Okay. And so then we kind of talked about, you know, you can, the most common chords that you use in capos is C shapes, G shapes, and D shapes. You could use E shape type chords and play in a different key. But you know, like for instance, if you played an E shape on the third fret up here, you know, you'd be playing a G. So, you know, you'd probably just want to do the G. That's up to you. Okay, so um, now I want to show you a couple of capo tricks. Um, this is, and also they make, they make capos for banjos and for ukuleles and stuff like that. I have one of those and they work really good for this next trick that I'm going to show you because they like a, a banjo capo is like for five strings. But you could take, if you have a clamp on capo like this one, you could put it on upside down and you could put it on five strings, okay? Let me do this so that I try to get it right here. Get it on five strings on the second fret. Now it's like playing a drop D chord, only it's drop E. Gives you that nice E in the bass. So if you were performing, you had one guitar and you didn't want to spend a lot of time tuning, you could just grab a capo and do this because it might be easier for you to sing that song in the key of E. Okay, so then um, another trick that you can do is you can come up on the fourth fret 
and do the same thing where you uh, leave that open. And now, you can do some stone stuff up here. Not every shape is going to work. When you're up on the fourth fret, G and C shapes seem to work pretty good, and D shapes. But you could throw it off kilter if you try to, try to put like an A or something in there. That doesn't work. But you can mess around with these, and it is a lot of fun to come up with all different uh, voicings and stuff. there for you. So that's capo in five strings on the fourth fret and first one I did was capo five strings on the second fret. Okay so there's that which is a lot of fun. Then let me show you one more little trick before we go. Okay now I've got another capo and I tuned this guitar down to double drop D but now I'm in double drop E. fun too. You can just start playing around with that and you hear all kinds of neat songs. When you want to play a G in this tuning, just use this note here. So it would it would be on the you're on the A string. You got a capo on the second fret here. Okay. So we're just hitting the, this note on the A string here. So that's like a C, C sharp. And I'm playing like what would be a C9 shape. That sounds good too. And you just play the D, like when you have a drop D, bottom, double drop D, you, you keeping that bottom string open. It's a two finger chord. That's a lot of fun. And again, if you've got a guitar tuned to double drop D and you want to go to E, okay, it's a quick change. Okay. Okay, here's one more quick tip. Um, we talked about it in uh, a breakout session number 12 called Plays Nice With Others. We talked about playing uh, one guitar with no capo and another guitar with a capo playing in the same key different voicings. So I just wanted to remind you guys about that. Let's say a, a song like Tom Petty's Learning to Fly. There's many guitars in it, but they're, uh, it's in standard tuning in the key of C. Most all the guitars are playing open chords in it without a capo, but there's one guitar that has a capo in the fifth fret He's playing a different voicing. So you want to try that. Get Get your buddies and play one play regular voicing C's and the other one up on the fifth fret or whatever key you're in and try voicing uh, in a different area. It's a lot of fun and it sounds really good too. So I hope this video helped you. Um, I tried to make it sh as short as I could, but I know it stretched out a little bit. So I'm going to let you go and I'm going to see you in the next video. And remember, 
hit that little subscribe and bell and like button. I'd sure appreciate it. See you soon. Bye-bye.